Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. We're talking about being thankful. You know, this is a month that we have dedicated to Thanksgiving. Uh, how are you working on that? Mm-hmm. You know, our, our verse today is Psalms 100, verse 4. And this is taken from the Amplified. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful and say so. Amen. So, so, so. so. Be thankful and say so to him. Bless and affectionately praise his name. It's an offering that he is wanting. It's an offering. Have you thought about that? Your words are an offering. That's an offering that we can all offer. It's an offering. Wow. It says, we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering. But the gates that we're trying to open up, you know, Sometimes we open up the wrong gate. Mm. Mm. You don't want to, you know, you talk about open up a can of worms. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that visualization is, it's like trying to get worms back into that can, you know. Mm-hmm. But, and it's like you can't get them back in. But, uh, you know, um, you know, once, once they're out, it's like it's out. And you're opening up, well... That's the same thing. When we open up things, when we open up a gate, sometimes we're opening up a gate to darkness. And we don't need to be opening up that gate to dark darkness. But we have the same ability to open up the gate to the kingdom of light. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Look at Isaiah 57, 19. Also from the Amplified. Peace, peace, or shalom, shalom, to him who is afar off, both Jew and Gentile, and to him who is near, says the Lord. Listen, I create the fruit of his lips, and I will heal him. Make his lips blossom anew with speech in thankful praise. (laughs) Does God need to heal your lips? Does he need to heal your words? Hmm. And, And... you know, he says he'll make our lips blossom yes. with thankful praise. Yes, Lord, do that. Yes. Do that for us. Yes. And listen, it starts out with shalom, shalom, which is wholeness. Mm-hmm. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm-hmm. So what's in your heart? Listen to yourself. If you're grumbling, complaining, if you're speaking not shalom, not peace, it's telling me what's there's there's something going on inside that we need to take care of. We need to spend time with Him, who is the Prince of Peace, mm-hmm. and let Him create in our lips, you know, um, His peace, and and let Him heal our words. Ephesians five four. Let there be no filthiness, which means obscenity or indecency nor foolish and sinful, which means silly or corrupt talk, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting or becoming, but instead voice your thankfulness to God. You know, just have you been with people where they're just, they just talk junk? Mm-hmm. And you just think, ah, you know, you just think, you know, just talk about junk. Mm-hmm. You know? I, and, and, and when we have the power to create life, to release life, yeah. In that word where it says, uh, instead, voice your thankfulness, that word thank or thankful it's from a Greek word, which the root meaning comes from the word meaning gratitude. Mm-hmm. Gratitude, act, actively, grateful language to God as an act of worship, thankfulness, giving of thanks, or thanksgiving, is an actively, is being actively grateful. Mm-hmm. Amen. Actively grateful. Mm-hmm. Look for things to be grateful for. 
what is such a wholesome healing power? I mean, look for, be grateful. Start your prayer time. Just, the Lord, I am so grateful. Thank you. I'm grateful for, you provided a home for me to live in. Thank you that I've got a bed to sleep in. And a, even if it's a blow-up mattress. <laughs> or whatever. You know? Well, thank you for blankets. Thank you for clothes to wear. Thank you for food to eat. I am so grateful. Thank you that you've given me a car to drive. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I am grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Grateful for your friends. Grateful for... You know what? I'm grateful. Oh. You know what? I hate being around people that are not grateful. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, Starley was uh, doing haircuts for the homeless. Some of you saw her little things, clips that she put on the yes. on the uh, Facebook, and she said they were just so grateful. They were so grateful. They were doing hair color, and they were doing haircuts, and they were, and they were waxing, and they were doing manicures, and they were doing, you know, she said, and everybody was just so grateful. And they were feeding them hamburgers outside, and there was clothes, and sent them home with, with um, new sleeping bags. And, you know, grateful, grateful, being grateful. You know. You know, if you are feeling like you've got problems, make yourself stop and just start thanking yeah. Him. Looking at what you do have. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm always saying don't look at your glass half empty, but half, you know, full or being filled up. <clears throat> I read something recently and it said that if you if your glass looks half empty, small pour it into a smaller glass. <laughs> I thought, yeah. You know, it's all perspective, isn't it? You know, just pour it into a smaller glass and you go, whoa, I've got a full glass now. It's even a smaller glass, oh, it's running over. Wow. Look at that. You know, be grateful. Be grateful. It's a muscle that we need to exercise. And the more you exercise it, guys, you'll get where you just automatically do that. You automatically. And, and, and you won't find yourself saying, oh, shoot, oh, darn. Or, darn you know, oh, I praise you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you. What are you going to do in this situation? Oh, my. You took care of me here. You took, me, took care of me there. What are you going to do this time? I can hardly wait to see how you turn this thing around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You choose to be thankful. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it causes your faith to rise up to expect Him to do something good. Yeah. Because He's a good God. Yeah, He's good. Man. He's always good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ephesians 5.20 from the King James, it says, At all times and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Now, when you go to the original, do you know what all means? All. all. It just means all. It means all. All means all. Nothing's left out. All. In all things. Now, you don't have to thank Him for all things. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Evil does not come from him, but in the midst of evil, you can give him praise yes. because he's greater than that. Yes. In all things, you give him thanks. Yes. You don't thank him that somebody was murdered or raped or whatever, but in the midst of it, you can praise him and thank him that he's greater than that and that he can turn it around. Yes. Right? In all things, you give him praise. Do you remember the book, From Prison to Praise? Merlin Crothers? Oh, I love that book. I used to buy cases by the hundred and <clears throat> give them out. And the whole thing was, you know, being able to praise him in all situations. And it was testimonies of how God turned things around when he did. 
That would be a good book for us to get again. So you got you train yourself to look for the good. You just look for it. You know, you've heard my story about the two boys. One was a pessimist and one was an optimist. And they tested them to see if they really were. And they put the boy that was a pessimist in this room full of gifts, all wrapped up. And then they put the other boy that was an optimist in the room and was full with horse poop. And so the pestimus, he didn't like anything. It was the wrong color, it was the wrong size, it was just, you know, and nothing made him happy. And so then they went into the room with the optimus and they, here he is just shoveling away, just whistling. They said, how can you be so happy with a room full of horse poop. He says, with this much poop, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That has to be our attitude. You know, it's like, you know what? God is God. And he's bigger than Philippians 4, 6. This is from King James. Be careful or anxious for nothing. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. Do you know what nothing means? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. That means don't be full of anxiety over anything. <clears throat> but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So in everything, so here's a situation where you could be anxious. So in the middle of that situation that you can be anxious, that instead it says, make your request made known to God with thanksgiving. So think about that. Here's a situation where you could be anxious. You could be upset over. So you're not going to pray about that situation. Maybe they just told you that they're, you're gonna, they're gonna turn your lights off, okay? <clears throat> your electricity off or something. Okay, so, and, that, and then you get anxious and you get upset. You're thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? You, you make your request made known to God with thanksgiving. So how do you do that? Lord, I thank you that you are, you're my provider. Amen. I thank you that you're my husband. Yes, yes. You take good care of me. Yes, I thank you that I can trust you. Yes. Yes. I thank you that you are in control. I thank you. I thank you that I don't have to be anxious about anything. I thank you for that. I give you praise. I give you praise. And I thank you for it. And so, Lord, I, I thank you that I don't have to be anxious about anything. Yes. You told me to bring this to you with thanksgiving. And so I give you praise and I thank you. I, I thank you that I can trust you. I don't know how you're going to turn this around, but I, I trust you. We may have candlelight dinner tonight, but you know what? That's okay, because I trust you. Yeah. I refuse to have anxiety over this. If you go to the Lord and you're saying, Oh no, why did you let this happen? Oh no, what did it happen? Why did this... This is the problem. No. You feed the problem that way. What you do, it says here, Be anxious for... Nothing. But in everything... By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request made known to God. Okay, I'm thankful, Lord, that you are my provision. Amen. So, Lord, I'm not sure how you're going to do it, but I make my request Amen. with thanksgiving for you to provide for me. Amen. I'm asking that you bring the money in so I can pay this bill. Whatever the thing is, see, I just trust. I choose to trust you, and I refuse to be anxious over it. Mm -hmm. Give me a creative idea. Show me what to do. Help me to be wiser with my finances. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are so brilliant.
And that you said, I have the mind of Christ. Because that means I have the answer for every situation dwelling in me because He dwells within me. I thank you for that. I can hardly wait to see what you come up with. See? With thanksgiving, we make our requests known. We bring our requests with thanksgiving. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ ruling, <laughs> His rule, act as an umpire <laughs> continually in your hearts. See, let His peace act as an umpire. Now, Sam played Little League. And I have a grandson, Solomon, who is in basketball. And I remember this basketball game that we went to last year or so. And I mean the parents were handing the umpire their glasses because they didn't think they, he was making the right calls. They were saying, umpire, I'm here! You need my glasses! <laughs> because you know what? Whatever the umpire said went. I don't care if the parents agreed with them or not. You know? No, the big games, they put it on film and they review it and, and, and then they can maybe change the call. But, you know, when Sam was playing baseball and somebody was sliding in, out. He was out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Safe. He was safe. Let peace be the umpire of your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something comes walking in. Is it disturbs your peace? Out. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's good. <laughs> if it affirms peace, yeah. safe. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let peace act as an umpire over your heart. Yes. Yes. You know, if we were to just do that, guys, and let peace rule, and, and you know, if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't mean it's not of God. It might just be out of timing. But it could be that it's not of Him. And it may make sense here, guys. And you think, well, of course. And somebody that's real good with words might just come try to convince you. Yeah, yeah. This is what, this is right. This is right. But you know what? If it doesn't bear witness, mm -hmm. if the peace of God doesn't say it's safe, then just wait on it. Do you know, I found that when God is leading me on stuff, He's never pushy. Now, the devil is pushy. Oh, yes. You know, if, if ever you're a salesman, and, and girls, I'm, especially those of you that are, are widows or living alone, be real watchful over this. If, if a salesman, somebody's trying to say, you know what, you've got to act on it right now. <coughs> if you don't act on it right now, you're not going to have this deal. This, this is, this is going over, you know, it's ending at midnight. You're not going to have this deal. You better do it now. If you feel pushed on something, mm -hmm. back off. Yes. Back off. Yes. Yes. You know, God, God, His goodness is, is um, trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And He's not pushy. Mm -hmm. He's not pushy. Mm -hmm. You know, He'll give you a desire. He'll prepare your heart. Now, there's, sometimes there's a window, I find, that he, he wants me to obey in that window. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But you'll kind of know it. And it isn't because you're feeling pushed um, or coerced on something. It's because you think, you, you know what? We need to do something right now. Yeah. You know? We change lanes or we say no on something right. or whatever. You know? But, but, you know, he gives you kind of a heads up on it. That's right. Let his peace... That soul harmony that comes from Christ ruling, okay, act as an umpire. How often? Continually. Continually in your heart, deciding and settling with finality 
<laughs> wow. All questions that arise in your mind. All questions. Peace can settle all questions. We can let his peace. If there is not peace, then just don't do it. I say, Lord, and, and, and go with him. Go to before him with Colossians 3.15. And say, Lord, I don't feel peace on this one. You know, if this if, if this is something you want me to act on, then I need your peace on it. Otherwise, I'm not. I'm backing off. I'm I'm going to choose to let peace act as an umpire in my heart. Okay. It says that with finality, all questions that arise in your mind, in that peaceful state, to which as members of Christ. One body, you are also called to live. So he has called us to live as one body in him. He's the head. And then it says, and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. How often? Always. Yeah. <clears throat> be thankful and appreciative. Giving praise to God always. Yeah. We're called to live in peace and to be thankful and to give praise. You want to know what your purpose is? <laughs> be thankful. <laughs> live in peace. <laughs> give praise. There you go. Aren't you glad you came? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 <clears throat> Thank God in how much? Everything. Everything. No matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks. We never have the right to grumble and complain. Now, we can take authority over a situation. How many of you read the COE that was Monday and yesterday? <clears throat> so, did that help you? I got a little note from a couple of you. You know, when 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 the when confusion and was coming into the room when Starley and I were cooking, and and mashed potatoes was flying all over the kitchen, and cranberry fluff was slithering across the floor, and glasses were shattering. You know. And the scripture came to my mind, James 3, 16, that when there's confusion and when there's envy and strife, there's mm -hmm. confusion in yes. every evil work. Amen. So I looked at Starley and I said, honey, are, are we okay? She mm -hmm. said, yeah, mom. I said, there's no, there's no jealousy or, mm -hmm. or strife. And she said, no, uh huh? So it doesn't mean that it's there. It may be something trying to uh, attach itself to you. <clears throat> So I said, all righty then, uh-uh, we're not accepting confusion in this place, yes. and you can just leave. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we took authority, and then we released the opposite. We released his shalom. We released his peace. And then we just kind of laughed and said, okay, let's clean it up. Aren't, aren't we glad that we made extra? Mm -hmm. What good would it have done to get mad? Or fuss at each other, or get upset with ourselves. Oh shoot! And I don't know what. That wouldn't have put the cranberry fluff back into the parfait glass, or the mashed potatoes back in the bowl. So you might as well, but but be on our guard. See, it was, and 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 the Lord showed me that there was a couple that I had invited to come <coughs> that I, I heard from later that was fussing and there was some fussing against us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, so you know what? There's the strife and Thank the jealousy. You, mm -hmm. But it was somebody else's household, yeah. but it was coming towards us. Yes. And if we would have agreed with it, yes. we would have run right into it, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You let peace rule as empire. Mm -hmm. And you be on your guard just because because something's happening, you don't say, well, there must be strife and jealousy and start pointing your finger. No. Mm -hmm. You 
you know. And now, if there had been mm -hmm. jealousy, or Starley was upset with me, or me upset with her, we, and she's, no, Mom, I'm upset about something. Okay, well, then we work through it. Mm -hmm. You know, let it be a thermostat so that you can check out your situation, and then you work through it. Mm -hmm. But, there, we, but we checked it out, and we were okay. Isn't that good? Yes. Because, see, yes. I have been in situations where there has been confusion, and there has been strife, and then I look, and sure enough, there's jealousy. Yes. I mean, there's, there's confusion like and evil, evil work. And, then, and I look, and there's jealousy and strife. Yes. But you know what? This was an eye-opener for me mm. that... It didn't have to be there. It may be knocking at the door. See? It was sent our way, but I didn't have to open the door. I said, no, out, out. See? Peace rules here. Peace rules in this house, and I'm not going to accept that. Isn't that good? Yes. See, just because it comes knocking on your door, you don't have to open the door and let it in. Thank you you, you can shoot. Now, if you happen to fall in the trap, because sometimes we do, we get, we get frustrated, we're running late, and we're, people are coming and we're not ready yet, and we're trying to make the mashed potatoes, or we're trying to do, you know, we've picked up anxiety. Well, then you back off and you just repent of that. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, step out of the situation, repent of it, get back into shalom. And then you move forward. Don't just say, well, I messed up, and oh well, here we go. No, uh -uh, you correct it right then. And you choose for peace to rule as umpire. Isn't that good? Yes. That's the word. Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times... <laughs> How often? All times. Offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify His name. At all times. <laughs> and it's a sacrifice of praise. So that tells me that I don't always feel like it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I, I praise you, Lord. My spirit is always willing. It's my flesh that's not willing, always. But you know what? I, I am not my flesh. I'm a spirit being. I live in this body. I have a soul, which is my mind, will, and emotions. But I am a spirit, and I'm one with the Holy Spirit, and I choose for His Spirit to rule. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when my body is acting out of line, or my mind, or my will, or my emotions are acting out of line, I can take the hold of the reins and pull it back in line, because me and Holy Spirit are a majority. <laughs> Amen? So my will, which is a part of my soul, right? Your mind, will, and emotions is your soul. Here's your spirit, and here's your body. So you take part of your soul, which is your will, and your will agrees with your spirit. See, now you're pulling your soul into alignment with the spirit. Your will is the chooser. God's given us a chooser. Amen? Amen? Let's give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to praise you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. All right, now let's, let's look at these oh, four things here. Uh, this is your assignment. Okay? I want you to list things that you're thankful for. Okay? So you can do that on the back of your paper. So you're going to list things that you're thankful for and hot pin it. That means just let it flow. Say, Lord, bring to my remembrance the things that I'm thankful for. 
Just start writing it. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. And you just write it. Write it. Write it. Don't think about it. Just when it comes to your mind, write it. Yeah. Write down the things you're thankful for. Number two, you pick a hard situation that you are in and you find something in that situation to be thankful for. Okay, so now we're narrowing it, narrowing it down. Maybe you've moved in with your parents or you've got a new job or you've whatever. There's something that maybe is a hard situation. Maybe you've made a move from one state to another state. There, maybe you're in a situation of transition that you're, that you're working through. Find something to be thankful for in that situation. And you have to write it down, okay? Number three, now bring your request to him for that situation in a form of thanksgiving, <clears throat> in a crafted prayer. Now a crafted prayer is one where you think it through. You take the scripture and you write it out. Like I gave you an example of if, if your lights were, you're being told that your lights are going to be turned off, okay? So you take the scripture and then you write it out. Lord, you are my provision. You are, you've, all, you've always taken care of me. You, know, you craft it. You write, it's a declaration is what you're doing. You're declaring the word of God, but be sure that it's in the form of thanksgiving. Okay? <clears throat> According to Philippians chapter 4. Okay? Number four. Think about what hinders you from being thankful. What is it that you are grumbling about? <laughs> I'm not looking at you. No, no. <laughs> what is it that's hindering you? Maybe it's a person. Maybe you're upset with somebody. So then we choose to forgive them. You know, remember, your spirit is always willing. It's the flesh that's weak. Maybe you've been disappointed in the past. Maybe you feel like God let you down. You know? Maybe you're still mad at somebody that hurt you 10 years ago. Let the situation bring to the surface where God wants to heal you. Let Him use it to bring healing in your life. Get some mileage out of it. If the devil's beating you up with it, at least use it for mileage. You know, move ahead in God. <laughs> Okay, and then do something like this. Add this to your list. Get you a little jar somewhere, and I want you to train your mouth to praise in all things. And when you find yourself not praising, make yourself put something in the pot. Now, you might have to do an IOU note. But put something in the pot to remind you that you messed up and that you're choosing Make it hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go out to lunch this week because, because I'm going to sew into the women at the well. They're going to be on the radio with us, not this Wednesday, but the week a week from Wednesday. The leader, women of the well. And, and I told her that we're taking up an offering because we're training our mouths to praise <laughs> and not grumble. So then, the envelope on the back of the chairs there, or if you're giving online, you know, just write it on prayer on the prayer line when you're giving on annasgate.org. But here, if you're using an envelope, write on there, women of the will. If you've got an offering from, you're disciplining your mouth. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give it to them because these women are overcoming addictions mm -hmm. with the Word of God. And some of us have had an addiction of grumbling. And so we're going to overcome our addiction by sowing into somebody else that is having victory in theirs. Amen. Does that sound good to you? Amen. Okay. So that's number five that you can write on your paper. Okay? All right, lift your hands up. Let me bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for their lives. I thank you that you're teaching us to praise you in all things. It's not an option. It's your 
desire. It's your will. It's what you've commanded us to do. And we choose to let peace rule, don't we girls? Yes. Our hearts and be an umpire deciding what to allow and what not to allow. And so Lord, we thank you for that. And we commit to this. Um, each situation, Lord, there are people here that are going through some hard situations. And so I just release to them right now um, the ability to trust you and to praise you in that situation no matter how difficult it is. And Lord, we know that you will turn it around for them because they're obeying your word. We give you praise now in the name of Carol Marie. We'd like to encourage you to visit annasgate.org for more information. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. There is an awakening taking place, and it's exploding around the body of Christ.